What is it you want, Barry? What do you want? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dying times here. Come with me if you want to live. That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. The Force will be with you. Always. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to 20th Century Geek. I'm your regular host, Scott Weatherly, and today I'm being joined by James. James, how are you doing, mate? You all right? I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, I'm very good. Good, good. You're joining me, and we're going to be talking about story time. We're doing another one of these story times. We're reaching back into the 20th century to find a short story to tell your children, or not tell your children, as the case may be, <laughs> with some of these stories. Um, and uh, this is only the second one we've ever done. The first one we did, we did... Uh, the Shirley Jackson's The Lottery. And today, I've got it here, uh, and we're going to be talking about Henry... I'm going to, speak, I'm going to say this wrong, aren't I? Henry Slezer. Uh, Why not? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Henry Slezer. I'll be putting a link into this into the in the usual show notes. Examination Day. And what I should say is you can find this online, because um, that's where I found it. Um, and I'll say, just follow the link below. Read, it's a really short story, actually. Um, it's about three pages. Uh, on A4, um, and so go find it, read it first, then come back, because uh, we're going to spoil the crap out of it, basically. Um, <laughs> but it's and it's got it. a twist, so you don't want to have that. Yes, really. it does. It's an interesting, it's an interesting twist, especially for the setup. Um, uh, so yeah, go read it and then come back. Um, what I, I would say is though, and for, before I ask where you came across this, I mm. got this off a of school's website. <laughs> <laughs> So I've actually got, I don't know if you can see, I can just see on the back, not only have I got the story, I've also, I've also got the lesson plan that goes with it. <laughs> I know that you haven't answered the questions, though, so that's your that's your oh. homework for after the episode. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I'll put them on. Um, so, no, it, it's quite um, it's quite an interesting story, but where did you come across it first? And, and then we'll get to why you chose it. Mm, well, funnily enough, I came across it in school, because oh. um, I'm a teacher, a secondary school English teacher in my normal life in my secret identity life mm-hmm. um and that was the first time i'd ever read it so i didn't experience it as a child and i was we teach um a dystopian fiction unit to year eight so to mm. uh what's that 12 and 13 year olds so in their it's second right, year of... right. in year because obviously you know we're both british we've, we've had this same sure. experience so well, sorry now you mm-hmm. do you do a, ut- a utopian or dystopian F- uh, fiction unit we do we, yes we did, we did not do that when i was at school <laughs> we did seamus heaney and his poetry that's about it sure we uh, still have to old. do we still have to hit with the poetry too <laughs> yeah. but um yeah you can imagine like this is one of my favorite units to mm. teach this one gothic fiction is great as well um yes yeah, so this is where i came across it we've got obviously several different things we can choose from um but i always pick this every year because mm. i really like it i think it um has a lot to say as you said in in three short pages mm. and the ending gets um the students every single time so it's great getting to that point with them and then you see their little brains pause for a second mm. work out what the kind of final lines of the story mean and then and then discourse starts and they just all want to talk about it so it's a really exciting um short story to, to teach actually it is it, I, I tell you what it's one of those things where like you say because it's, it's it is short like i say it's three mm-hmm. three pages so it's a perfect entry like story mm-hmm. this is like you can you know if i was taught this at school if i'd have been given this at school like yeah this would have really opened up but they're like hang on <laughs> you can go and read this you know like oh they don't have to be you know um this sort of like huge literary thing so oh you can do mm-hmm. these, you can do great things in really short bursts and so yeah no i'm, I'm really i'm i think it's really cool now that this is actually getting taught in school and the fact <laughs> you teach it is, is ace um so let's give a little bit of a so why have you chosen this then um uh, to present you know for us to discuss on the show mm, i think you know obviously i listened to you and tony do um your first story time mm. um and i was just inspired by it really and also i think I never read the lottery before. So mm. I did exactly what you've said for this uh, show is that I started listening and then literally two minutes in, I paused, I went away, I read it. Um, in fact, I listened to the audio reading that you yeah. recommended. 
um, and then came back and listened to you guys. So, yeah, I was inspired by that. And actually, I think these two poems are often pair together mm. um, in terms of the message they're trying to provide. So I thought this might be a nice follow on um, from, from, from where you and Tony left off. No, no, it is good. It works well. I like the fact that this feels, and I've got no evidence for it really in the story. Um, mm. Whilst the lottery is, you know, clearly a sort of a folk horror, you know, dystopian mm-hmm. folk horror, it's clearly set in the countryside. Um, this feels more urban to me. Mm-hmm. It's just, there's something about this that feels, you know, feels urban. It feels, and when we get to when we get to the story, um, mm. it, it it definitely feels more akin to like 1984. Or yeah. um, you know something something like, it feels city based. You know, I can imagine. I mean, the other thing is before we get to this story as well, I need to highlight this was published in 1958. Mm-hmm. And the more I saw, so I didn't actually. I read the story first, mm-hmm. and I honestly thought this was a critique of Reagan's America. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. And and then and then I went, oh oh no shit! It was actually published like 30 years before. Like, you know. So um, I I thought I was really really interesting um give a quick overview as you know as you, if you're going to teach us about it give us a quick overview of the plot then what is the story <laughs> about just before sure. you do though just last before you listeners Ooh, last thanks. last t- this is it now <laughs> last opportunity stop the podcast go read the story it's three pages then come back you've done it right They're james back. hit us with it go on then um so uh, you know really simple like three pages almost like a three-act structure i would say mm. um we open experiencing the Jordans family day. It's the youngest, or the youngest son, it's the son's uh, birthday. And he's turning 12 years old. And that's important because at that point, when you hit 12, you've got to take a government test. And that's sort of going on in the background. And as we are experienced readers of dystopian fiction, I think alarm bells start ringing. But um, in terms of probably when it came out and in terms of, you know, like I said, it, with the students that experience it when I teach it, they, they're not really picking up on those hints because I think they are background noise. I think it's cleverly done by Celeste mm. because we quickly go back to his birthday. Then we um, cut to the day of the examination and the kind of the build up and, and, and the morning and the, the journey there. And then we see the examination and the results of it um, by the end. But it's, it's not quite like a page per, per act. Um, but there's a definite kind of, you know, like I say, three act structure that it follows to get you to this kind of final point. I mean, it has that kind of Shalaman, I suppose, like sense of it where I feel like you can go back to the start and reread it and yes. see new things once you've finished, much like you can, you know, The Sixth Sense or Unbreakable or yeah. um, how much like you discussed about the lottery as well. Yeah, it's like you say, yeah, it's once you know the reveal, mm. there, is, there is that sense of like, oh, there were clues to this throughout. Definitely. Um, I mean, one of the first things is the, the first sort of the, the first page or the first sort of act is um, mm. you, you hear the parents just that they have this thing of, is he going to be all right? And they're like, no, mm. he'll, he'll 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 be fine. He'll do well. Is 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 sort of this the sense? Uh, and then they have to explain that there's going to be this exam or this test. Mm-hmm. And they're like, they're almost like, don't worry about it. it's your birthday. Don't worry about it. You know, it's coming yeah. up, but it's not it's not not important. It's a week later, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then you you get a, an interaction between. Um, mm. the son and his father where the son's a bit like I mean, the son pissed off because it's raining on his birthday yeah and so the, 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 the sort of the boy asks a series of questions as any kid does you know sort of like mm-hmm. why is it raining today why couldn't it wait till tomorrow uh why is the grass green and how far away is the sun mm. and in in the, the reactions you know again this may have just been my my mood at the time Mm-hmm. I read the father's responses as almost like a, as you would with a kid, you know, sort of like, oh, you know, I don't Absolutely. know. Yeah. I, I don't know. And then when he gets to how far away is the sun, it's like 5,000 miles. And it's almost like dismissive. I thought it was like, mm-hmm. you're, you're asking questions. I, I can't be bothered to deal with this. Let's... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, And so I took it as that, which made me, I was maybe in an impatient mood <laughs> at, at the time. I don't know. Um. But like you say, when it comes to it, and we'll get to the, the thing in a minute, the, the actual test, and we'll discuss that. Like you do, you go back and you go, "All oh, right, yeah, he he doesn't know." Like yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, he's being dismissive. Or he's he's being abrupt because like he legit can't answer those questions. Yeah, um, absolutely. And that's the layers I think that are clever about about this writing, and why when I teach it, it's exciting to go back and show this to the students about what you can do about 
about leaving clues, leaving those breadcrumbs, leaving mm. a trail that without making it too obvious. And I think this this short story does it perfectly. And they're the two moments, aren't they? Yeah, why is the why is the grass green? But particularly the sun. Yeah. And actually the smart kids that you get in the room when you teach this go, hang on a minute, that's not right. Um sorry, that's like that's I, I mean I'm not gonna I was about to do a geography thing and I'm terrible at geography, which is why I teach English <laughs> really. Five thousand miles is like going to Australia or whatever it is, you know. Um that's definitely not as far away as the sun. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean it's a it's the first like red flashing warning sign that there's something mm. wrong. Um, and I like the way the questions um escalate. Sure. You know, he says, like, you know, why does it rain? Why can't it rain mm-hmm. tomorrow? And his father's like, you know, because it just did. That's all, you know, rain makes the grass grow. Like, and that's yeah, a legit, yeah. that, that's a fine answer. Because if you get mm-hmm. if you're talking to a, a 12 year old or whatever, like, well, why is it rain today? But you don't want to get into the whole thing of like, you know, low pressure and weather system. You're like, it just sure. did. Like today is the rainy day. Fine. You know, and it's just like, okay, that's that because it does, that's all. Why is the grass green? And again, you're sort of like, okay. I'm looking at it going, he's probably going to give another dismissive answer because again, you go, all right, you can get into chlorophyll and, and you know, um, the whole thing of all plants work. And you go, I'm not explaining that to a kid like that. <laughs> no, 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 no offense to you, dude. That's a teacher's job. Um, yeah. So you can go, yeah, fine. But it's the fact is nobody knows. Mm, mm. And and again, you go, there is that flashing, like say, that's when the red flag starts to go, hang on yeah. a minute. This is, you know, um, so. It, it, it's it's well paced. I think that's the thing is when you get mm. to it, it is really well paced on that front. Um, I, we'll get to the end. I mean, because I have to we have to sort of jump to the end to sort of assess. I think the, yeah, the, sort sure. of the other parts of it. So the boy goes to this test. He's taken to this, mm. this place. Um, and he's taken into a room and they give you a drink, uh, and it's basically mm-hmm. sort of like, um, it it, it relaxes him. It's just designed mm-hmm. there to, they say it was to make you, make you truthful and it's safe like peppermint, but it doesn't. Um, and then they ask him a series of questions and it's revealed basically after that, the parents are sat there at home in, anti- you know, in anticipation of waiting for this sort of report from, from the, um, the government's agent, I suppose. Mm. And when, it, when they call through, um, they say, and this is, this is one of the lines, um, you know, swear is he sort of renounces you know, that, this is the government education. This is, I love this. The government educational service. Mm-hmm. Your son, Richard M. Jordan, classification order, has completed the government examination. We regret to inform you that his intelligent quotation is above the government regulation, according to Rule eighty four, section five of the new code. And that's when they sort of you go right. Yeah. And so again, again, right. My brain is working forward. I'm thinking he's been taken off to mm-hmm. be to be used in some, you know, some group some like, specific like think tank or yeah yeah yeah, yeah kind of thing right so he's been off to be sort of taken away but then so so you may specify by, te- by telephone whether you wish his body interred by the government or would you prefer a private burial and that's a proper gut punch of an end because yeah. <laughs> i'm it thinking is. like it's a dystopia but like oh my god like cry they killed the smart kids mm. um and so yeah like it's a real um it's a it's a real sort of like you know shitter of an ending to be perfectly honest when you sort of get that you're like, yeah. oh, Christ. Um and that's it. It's literally the last two sentences of the short story, and we're out. And that's the point where, you know, and it's I guess for you and me reading it, we're like, oh my god, but like the, it's kind of subtle in a way, you know. We just get we get body and we get burial mm. um repeated a couple of times, but it's not it's not labored, it's not over the top, it's not like kind of um melodramatic or anything, it's yeah. just you know. You can imagine it being delivered in this monotone manner as well by almost like an automated service. Um, it would be just another person's day in the job. Like that's their yeah, afternoon. Absolutely. That's their that's their Thursday afternoon, right? I've got this list of people. I've got to call and let them know. Mm-hmm. That's their job. Yeah, and yeah. so there would there would there wouldn't be you know like that. You know, you go to a funeral service or whatever. Like this, their 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 job is to show compassion yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and empathy. This person would be like, oh god, right, I'm on to job number ten. Right, I've mm-hmm. got to I've got to ring the Jordans, you know, get it done. If I get it, if I get this done in the next ten minutes, I can clock off before like five o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it does; it has that feel to it, and that's what that's what I was saying about this being urban. It's more of a sort of it feels mm. like there's, there's bureaucracy sat around this. Yeah. Um, in contrast to the to this sort of um, the lottery was about tradition and about sort of like you know it's about this thing of tra- local tradition this feels like a bureaucracy that there's a there's a government setup 
to, to basically kill mm. smart kids. Um, yeah, yeah. And so it does, it feels, I mean, it's, it's dark. The, the ending is a dark ending. Mm. Um, so, yeah, what, what, how do the kids react? I mean, you know, just give us some insight into sort of like those kids. You know, when you discuss this with mm. the kids, what's their first reaction to it then? Um, so after the surprise and the explanation, because, you know, the quick ones get it and then, you know, the slightly slower ones, you have to explain what's going on, um, mm-hmm. which is te- teaching in a nutshell, essentially. <laughs> um, they're, they're, they're absolutely shocked. And most of the time, all they want to do is go back and find clues and reasons for, for how we've got there. Because you say to them, you know, this has been hinted at, at mm-hmm. for you. Um, what's nice is that we're obviously teaching this to 12 and 13 year olds. So they're of the age. Yeah. of um dickie as he's calling this i always change it to rick when i yeah. teach because i can't be i can't be doing with the dickie stuff and also you know, Dick. uh, you know the tips from the back and and also you know rick we have you know we have we have rick and blade on us so i like to make mm-hmm. that little little play for myself um so yeah they, they, they're really interested they want to go back and see the clues and it's normally outrage, to be honest. Like, yeah. oh, we're meant to be in school to be to be intelligent and to be able to, you know, make progress and to get a good job. And oh, look at this world where they're killing the smart kids. So, it definitely provokes the right reaction. It has exactly what I would imagine. So that's mm. our wants is that for kids to challenge what they're being taught and what they're being told. Yeah, it's it's one of the things that. Well, we'll get to the wider world because it's it, 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 every story. Every story exists in a world like you. This is a glimpse through a tiny, tiny window mm. at this scenario. But it obviously exists within its wider world. Um, but the, the the thing that I like about this, as we sort of said, that the ending is um, it's just in passing. Like, like you said, there's no mm. melodrama. There's no big fanfare. It's just that it just ends. So you get a statement, and then you're like, oh shit, that's it. <laughs> But there's there's details in the story that I really like. So, so we talk mm-hmm. about this because um, straight away, like you say, when you go back, you're like, well, why don't they tell them to, to act thick? Mm, absolutely, yeah, Because yeah. like, like, uh, I like the fact that like, you know, um, Ricky, he does say, I'm getting good marks in school, mm. and so you want you should you know his parents go, well, it's not that sort of test, it's not that sort of exam, you know. So yeah, I'm I'm curious what the exam is, but I love the fact that this has clearly been something that's thought out because they've had this scenario before where they've gone, oh, look, they're playing stupid, you know, they're playing silly buggers. Mm-hmm. So you, they they have this peppermint drink mm. is clearly drugging them into sort of like uh, a truth serum. Yeah, almost like a truth serum, or sort of mm. like you know, it, it makes them drunk to an extent where they are compliant, mm-hmm. and you know, it sort of allows them to sort of to show their honesty or to honestly answer a series of questions. Mm. Um, uh, and it also, um, he says about this, there's a light in his eyes and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. It, it, it made me think of like a clockwork orange as well, of that sort mm-hmm. of like, you know, that torture. Um, but it, it, the linking this to, the, to what is happening in this world, I'm curious to how the society works. Cause I'm like, yeah, what? absolutely. So, so something's clearly happened for, to, to trigger this. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the, I, I started like, in my head, I'm like, all right, so is this only. Mm-hmm. Uh, people of a certain class so mm-hmm. is it only the lower classes where this happens to is it to everybody why is this happening you know so what there's, there's clearly someone clever because they're coming up with this whole bureaucratic system so mm. is there a government or an elite class in charge that they're trying to keep people down um and so i'm starting to see all kinds of things in this which is why i sort of thought of reagan's america where it was about yeah. you know, um the anti-intellectualism of sort of the late 70s into the 80s um and so yeah it, it just it's just i don't know that that sort of really started to spring out at me when i'm sort of like you know mm. i'm picking away at this and going like well what about this what about that like you know this idea of idiocracy especially when you've had like you know everything's about trump these days but when you've had mm. when you've had a, a reality star as a pre- the president of the united states you do read a story like this and you're like yeah you know <laughs> we don't take the exam and kill them but there's clearly this this anti-intellectualism and this need to to repress intelligence mm-hmm. it's rampant in parts of the western world um and yeah so i mean you know still somebody works in the, in the education sector i'd argue it's going on in our own country as well yeah no um, yeah <laughs> right it's going on right now there's an elit- elitism going on within the system now which is you know whether it's the amount of fees you've got to pay or the subjects which are being preferred um you know this is a really relevant story for what's going on right now yeah thankfully we don't kill them 
but we certainly limit the opportunities. And I work in an inclusive school, which um, I think we have something like 48 different languages. And, you know, mm. we have refugee students that come to our school. Um, so we have, you know, a, a total scope of, of the kids that come, um, which is an amazing, amazing place to work in, in that regard. Um, but, you know, if, unfortunately for some of them, not for anything that, that we, we do, there is, that there is a limit, you know, there's subjects yeah. that are getting taken away all the time that are vocational you now we've got we're going through the issue of btex being devalued at the moment as well so yeah this this story from 1958 still has relevance in 2021 definitely if, if anything i'll say it has it it's had an increased relevance over the mm-hmm. years i mean mm-hmm. it, it made me sort of i asked off when I, I googled a little bit i didn't really find anything I was like, okay so what I, di- I didn't in um you know i didn't really google henry uh Slizar, but i was like okay what was happening in the 50s Mm, mm. That, that drove this um and I, I, there's not much you know 50s yeah, sure. the 50s is really considered sort of like the heyday you know uh, uh, america considers it sort of like their golden era it's the post-world war ii it's you know mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's one of their boom periods the nuclear family is sort of this this idea of the nuclear family sort of generating the 50s yeah i'm not saying they were perfect because it's also the height of segregation and all this other stuff that was going on but it's sort of like this this touchstone in america Yet this story clearly comes mm. from somewhere, and he's clearly having mm. making a comment on somewhere, and, and then for it to also be used as a Twilight Zone episode. So, um, yeah, I, I just find it interesting. There's, there's clearly this fear of, a, you know, the education system is incredibly important, and the, the fact that it can be manipulated to control and suppress a, a population is is really scary. Yeah, it does that stuff that all dystopian or, or good dystopian fiction does, isn't it? Which is somehow it comments on the time but also manages to look forward um yeah and, and this absolutely does that the fact that we, we can relate it to now the fact we can relate it to 1980s america obviously slezo was an american writer so you know there's the the majority of relevance i suppose is tied to the states but we're british so we've got to relate it to our own lives as well um and you know some of the things you've mentioned you know you've mentioned 1984 yeah clockwork orange absolutely I mean, you even said the word, and you said Id- idiocracy, but, you know, yeah. that was a Mike Judge movie, which was all about this idea of, yeah. um, suppre- you know, about how as we, as we grow old as a species, all the less intelligent, I was going to use a different term, but I'll, I'll measure myself, the less <laughs> intelligent people may go on to, to, to thrive within society. So, um, yeah, he's definitely tapped into something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, he, he tapped into something like years before. I mean, you know, I, yeah. I, I was really trying to find out, like, you know, is is this, is this, um, is this at the time was it sort of a tale around segregation as well? Like, you know, can yeah. I read, can I read race into this? And I was like, well, not really, because <laughs> there's there's nothing there to to insinuate that they could well be. You know, the the, the names are sort of generic enough that it wouldn't make any difference. <laughs> But I thought if it, if it was if he was making a comment on race and segregation and, and the suppression of, of you know um, the you know, the black community or any minority community in America, like it, there would be a different angle to it. This feels like yeah. The more the more I feel about it, the more this feels like a class story, you know, like a, mm-hmm. a working class story. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It it, it sort of tapped into for me like every, this is like a nugget because this is it's so concise. It's a nugget. Mm. But it's the nugget that sort of like. Sp- that so many dystopian stories come from everything from like 1984, V for Vendetta, um, yeah, you know, those sorts of things. Where you go, yeah, JG Ballard's High Rise comes to, comes to me as well. <clears throat> yeah, high Rise is a very good example, actually. Yeah, and that's a really, you know, that, and that again, that idea that like, you can the higher up you live, you mm. know, the more the, the more um, affluent you are and the more influence you have over the building is, yeah, um, like Blade Runner as well. Yeah, yeah, so this yeah, it's, it's a real good like entry point to sort of say like you know if you read this as a kid you're like well if you like this maybe not go eight nine eight four that's pretty heavy <laughs> yeah. but you know if you want to go go check out these other things mm. um and because i do think dystopian you know this idea of um and like i say you said in, in comparison to the lottery and i do think this is a great companion piece to the lottery actually it mm. really does work um where sort of like the lottery reaches back into the past Mm-hmm. You know, this idea of sort of tradition and stuff. This feels like it's reaching to the future, but in a sort of a controlled mm-hmm. um, way. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so, yeah, I, I don't know. Just there's just there's there's also like an ickiness to the story as well. 
Mm. Uh, especially the second half and ickiness is probably the wrong word i shall think of a better word to use to articulate it but um especially at the moment with uh things especially in america like you know with kids being trapped in cages and the way the kids have been treated mm. um but the whole the fact that, that the whole government setup like they go to a building it's set up specifically for this that they have to wait mm. Um, they see other kids going, being sent into the room, and then it's sort of, you know, there's someone behind all this is obviously mm-hmm. the, the bureaucracy. Like, so in my head again, I'm like, okay, so he sees someone in the examination, they give him the drink, that's their job. Then the test is taken, and it's obviously marked. He is then executed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's someone doing that, and again, I'm like, right, that's someone's job. Mm. It, 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 again, like, you know, Brazil can't com- uh, comes to mind when I think of these things. So I'm just going mm. to yeah, yeah, yeah. this idea of like there's uh, there's a, there's a character in Brazil. Um, if anyone's watched it, it's a fantastic film, mm-hmm. Terry Gilliam film. Um, the main character sort of goes off the rails. He's got he's, he's basically like a pointless bureaucrat. But at one point, like his one of his friends, played by uh, Michael Palin, is 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 a torturer. That's his job. <laughs> And they wear these weird baby masks. Um, and at one point, like, they're just having a conversation and talking about it. He's like, oh, yeah, well, I've got to go. Uh, I've, got this other, I've got another job this afternoon, so I better get on with it. And it is this idea of just sort of like, you know, having lunch, going back onto the job. Um, mm. and, and, and that sort of like, you know, just thinks about tickles into my brain there as well. So there's so much this story sort of like suggests. Yeah. That, that is, it isn't up front, but is inferred. That is, is you know, um, from such a small story and that may be that you know you mm. have to, you i come with baggage maybe i come with pop culture baggage i don't know but i don't know what are your thoughts i've been rumbling, rambling for a while sorry no i think that's absolutely true i think there's so much scope for this to go to other places i mean reading it today and you know thinking about past what i would normally think in past which is you know gearing this towards 12 and 13 year olds knowing i was going to be talking to you um <laughs> with a slightly more mature brain than a 12 and 13 year old um oh, oh, well let's then um, don't give me too much credit <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i i was the same my brain was spiraling off in directions i was like oh i wonder if i could use this as a starting point to make my own kind of you know just mm. in you can imagine if this was turned into a film or a tv series this would be episode one right yeah and then the rest of it would be like a kind of logan's run maybe about a family who tried to run away of their child or handmaid's tale tag- you know that sort of thing yeah absolutely yeah yeah circumnavigate the system or mm. somebody working within the industry who swaps out the peppermint for um you know a substance which doesn't do this for the kids and you know you can imagine all the different ways that you could you could spin mm. this out um i agree what what i uh, like brave new world isn't it as well that's yes. that just sprung into my mind yeah all these things absolutely you, you can imagine this could be a real springboard um for other stories set in this universe i agree and when you were talking then about, you know, kind of currency of, of what's going on in the world, um, I was thinking about all those kind of like the Christian um, gender, is it gender and like sexuality, re- rehabilitation, I'm doing an air quotes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they've got an America as well. Yeah, pray the gay away, that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. All that kind of yeah. stuff is, you know, this this level of scary that is really going on. Oh, yeah. Like it goes on, you know, again, we, we, we talk about America a lot in this one because it's so... Yeah, you know, such a big country. It's such it's so prominent in the world, and it's obviously so loud about all of its problems. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that's not to say it doesn't happen over here in Britain. Like course, you say, yeah, there, yeah. you know that there are there are um, strong alt right Christian groups over here mm-hmm. that do exactly the same, and not just Christian groups. But you know, you yeah, you hear about other religious and minority groups have got cultures, or they've got sort of like mm-hmm. you know, other, other things that have go on behind the scenes. Mm that like you say they have a bureaucracy and an organization behind them it's it's the society will fall into these things mm. um and, and again like you know one of the th- reading this because we've gone through things that, you know and say um you think about like the surveillance state you know the mm. thing like the, the the introduction of, of more and more cameras or uh, t- uh having to have more than an airport, something a lot of that stems out of a single event, like it was a massively tragic event, you know, the uh, the attacks of 9 11. Mm. But we are now 20 years on, literally, we are 20 years on this year mm-hmm. from 9 11, and we are still feeling the effects mm. of that. Um, but we fell into a whole bunch of stuff. We like in that first instance, you're like, no, it makes sense. This, of course, we will have this level of security, of course, we're going to do all these things, and then 20 years later, you sort of go, 
still got those things in place. <laughs> you know, yeah, she, yeah, she'd, yeah. Be, she'd be still really be worried about that. Um, and it feels like for this, like what happened? Like what was the mm-hmm. tipping point? And again, like you know, you want to dig into this story. I want to climb through that teeny window and climb into this world. And be like, what happened? Mm. that instigated this change that this the intelligence is in, at least in some areas is monitored um and all this other stuff um it, yeah it, it's it's interesting to see that there's obviously a trigger point and that's not even hinted at they don't, there's no explanation no. around the, the, the other parts of society you don't even know it's just like you know it's clearly there because it, it mm-hmm. something's had to happen but it, it's um yeah, this, this could be like it's a window into a fascinating world. I'd love, like you say, to spin this out. Someone to take this and be like, "This was my inspiration, and I created this." And, and absolutely, this is my yeah. World, yeah. That's why someone like Shalaman comes to mind because he's always that very focused on, you know, in science, it's that one family, but there's a worldwide alien invasion going on, and um, yeah, that's, you know, he he's he's that he, he's that sort of mind to take this forward. I think. Um, I, I agree, and it's one of the things that like Julian and I talk about a lot in stories like Time of Space is like mm. we like smaller stories. Mm. You know, I I, I love a, I love a great action film. I love it when you know world ending stakes. Fine, that's great, but not every film can be that. And I love it when there's a mm. film that is clearly like earth shattering for a group of individuals. However, mm. also in that same world, there are people that get up that day and don't know and don't care and mm. just get on with their life. And it's sort of, it's smaller and, you know, it's a bit more constrained, even when you do have dystopian films. And for me, like Blade Runner, like you mentioned before, is a really good example of that. Mm-hmm. In that really that film is about, like, you know, D- Deckard's <laughs> journey and these six replicants. And that's it. Like yeah, be, yeah. Be, beyond their story, like no one in that world gives a shit. Sure, yeah, it, yeah. It just goes on, um, and and that's the same with this. Like in this, we you know you experience the the story of the Jordans up until this tragic moment, and nobody else mm. gives a shit. Like this, this yeah. world goes on, um, and I find that fascinating. I think that's a really cool yeah. sort of interesting piece, and the fact that mean, it doesn't it doesn't, sw- it doesn't it doesn't go into the grief either. There's no sort of like you said no, no. drama. It just woof. And that's yeah. another angle, isn't it? Like, you know, what happens to the Jordans afterwards? Do they have another child and hope that's not as intelligent? Do they, um, do they fight back against government? Are they too stupid to, to do anything themselves? Yeah, it's fascinating. Ender's Game is one of my favourite books of all mm-hmm. time. I've never seen the movie adaptation. I wouldn't but, recommend um, it. <laughs> no, fair enough. But um, obviously the whole concept of that is the idea of, like, so he's, he's called Ender because he's a third so he's the mm. third child of a family when you're only supposed to have two and they were given special discompensation so again that comes to mind about that idea of like control of families and growth and um very different story of course but in terms of what what, what happened to the jordans um and where do they go from here as well it would be fascinating to know mm. i mean yeah you, you say about that this idea i mean that's what china did you know this idea sure. of yeah. you know for, first it was single uh, mm. single children families and then now they've realized that that's cre- creating a real population problem so they're like no have more than that but obviously mm-hmm. there, was the, there was the same thing there that, that male children were preferred over female children and so mm-hmm. terrible things happen to female children mm. and to babies um and, you know, and, and, and again there are there are places in this world where we just don't know what really goes on i mean i think north korea sure. but you know like you yeah don't really know what's going on in North Korea. I'm pretty sure I could mm-hmm. probably find more out more than I know, but I don't think I want to know. Yeah. Absolutely. And again, it comes to this idea like you know, we 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 in the West in particular sort of pride ourselves um stupidly, which sort of is ironic for the story, on this thing of this thing of the golden democracy. Oh, we're we're brilliant, mm-hmm. we're free, you know, we have we live in these democratic democratic countries. And I think more than ever in, in, in the last couple of years has highlighted how that is completely not the case. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are only one major event away from this this yeah, kind sure. of ex- this existence, mm-hmm. um, and some blonde headed knobhead, the head of government, <laughs> take taking us there. So, um, imagine removing yourself from an all encompassing European Union that that makes sure we all look out for each other. I mean, what? <laughs> yeah. who, who would imagine that would be a good idea? Exactly. Yeah. It's it's it, well, yeah. And again, you know. When you get to these dystopian stories, like you can, like, yeah, that's a really good point. Was there a referendum on on these this legislation? Sure. Like, yeah, this yeah, is obviously yeah. had to pass through a government. So, um, 
I well, didn't for this to happen and people have had to... Yeah, you know, or, or has it, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't sound like they've got an awful lot of choice. And as you said, talking about the start, you know, the parents, they're avo- are they avoiding talking about it? Or, um, you know, is it is it through fear? Are they being monitored in, in their home so they can't warn him? I mean, that's yeah. another level that, that could be going on, isn't there? Um, yeah, the do they not understand yeah. the test themselves so they can't explain it? Are their minds wiped afterwards? I mean... All of this is left for you to, to decide for yourself and think about. Yeah, and the, the one thing that's also inferred, I suppose, at least is is I don't think it's completely. It's never ex- explicit, but I suppose it's implicit. Mm. Is this isn't this isn't new either, because both no. his, he's twelve, and his parents are suggesting that they went through mm. a similar experience. Agreed. So if you accept that they're sort of you know, if they had him when they're 20, 21, that means they're mm-hmm. in their thirties now. So that this thing's been around at least for several decades. This this, yeah. uh, this examination, um, and the the population is high because it says thousands. Again, whether this is the bad not understanding numbers, but he says thousands a day. Yeah. So again, there's that suggestion that population figures are high, and whether this is another way to to keep them managed and keep them down, or clearly the main focus is about keeping the government in power, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but whether there's a set, whether there's a secondary factor for this and the rise of the the, the young and the intelligent to take over um, is being controlled, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, uh, one of the things we'll, we'll sort of wrap on this because I think it's all we've probably got a lot of points on this for for a story of this of 33 pages. <laughs> like, there's a lot to think about. One of the things mm. I, I'm, I'm I'm tempted to look at and I haven't known it is because um, I put the first I put this into Amazon and I expected like a collection mm. of short stories or something like. Uh, Henry Slazar hasn't, I couldn't find a great deal. Like he hasn't, mm. there, there is no, uh, I haven't Googled him either. And I probably should have done that. That's that's not me, me not doing my due diligence. But I was like, I wonder what else he's done. Like, are there other mm. stories in this world or is he doing similar things? But it doesn't seem to be the case. Like this seems to just. So I think I, I had a little look around because um, kids kids often ask as well. Um, mm. So it's worth knowing a little bit. And then I thought, you know, I'd do a little, little bit of prep. So um yeah i think he, he wrote a lot of like radio plays mm. he wrote for twilight zone in the 80s i think so perhaps that's how he you know here's my story <laughs> I wrote in the 90s. um how about we make this um but i find it fascinating to know that this was first published in playboy yeah of all the places so what sort of five years after it had launched um playboy is an interesting one because again mm. at least at least in those early days mm. uh, like i so said the late 50s early 60s Playboy was a lot classier than you think of it today. <laughs> yeah, kind of counterculture, right? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like, um, um, you know, it, like people. Philip K. Dick was published in Playboy. Yeah, Fahrenheit, um, Fahrenheit four five one was published there first, wasn't it as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Ray Bradbury. So there's a lot of like, mm. it, it's one of those ones that when you go back and you go, really? Mm. You know, I could see both boobs and great sci-fi all in one <laughs> magazine. <laughs> That's, yeah. that's fantastic. It's not. It's not the magazine you get now. Um, so yeah, no, yeah. That that it, it's interesting to see that. Stuff. I think it's like even Stephen King, I think, had several mm-hmm. stories published in uh, in Playboy as well. So, so yeah, it's interesting that this this seems to be just a bit of an, an outline really for him that he obviously mm-hmm. did other things, but he seems to hit hit it out the park quite well with this with I this think, one um, story. Yeah, I think um, whether it was this or, or something else that, that screwed him, I think he wrote for Alfred Hitchcock Presents as well. Oh, yeah, that's, that was a great show. I think he's one of those guys, he's sort of, you know, tink, I think he's, you know, maybe a bit of a, a work, you know, a workman for all these kind yeah, of shows yeah. and radio plays. And I'll be interested to sort of see, I might want to do that. So like I say, especially if you wrote for the, for uh, Twilight Zone, I, did, I really enjoyed mm. you know, the, the Alfred Hitchcock, Alfred Hitchcock Presents are, are pretty good as well, actually. They're worth seeing. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's, it's been interesting to read this. This has been, as, you know, it's a little it's a nice little nugget because again it's not something i'd ever heard of didn't know it mm-hmm. uh, i love the fact that you've now told me that kids are getting a dystopian mm-hmm. and although a gothic horror section i want to I'm, I'm going to ask you about that in a sec but like um yeah i've never actually wanted to go back to school before this sounds cool <laughs> um so yeah no it's a it's a fascinating story uh and so I do, again like, you know we've ruined it for you now if you haven't already read it but i would say to just yeah. go and read it enjoy it and then you know, see what you think about it. Let us know what you think. Um, but yeah, any final thoughts before we do sort of like you know, look at sort of wrapping that up? No, other than I think, um, yeah, I thoroughly recommend everyone reads it too. Like you say, it won't take you long at all. It's only three pages. 
And then um, hopefully, just as I would say to my students, I hope that inspires people who maybe have not had an interest in dystopian fiction before or, um, you know, the things that we've mentioned here, there's so much you could you could go and do. Or please, somebody, go on and, and fanfic this and make it into something Yeah, go um, into this world. Expansive. Yeah, go find I will, out more I will read world. it. De- oh, definitely. I, yeah, I'd be fascinated to read that. But you're right. I think like this is a this is a springboard. If you enjoy mm. this, uh, there are a number of short stories, no- uh, novellas, novels, comics, and films that you know that like this will mm-hmm. this will take you into. Um, dystopian fiction is is fascinating. Um, I love the fact you mentioned comics there because it's the one thing I don't like about this short story is on that first page when the dad's being dismissive, he says, I'll go, go and sit in the corner and read your comics, will you? Yeah. And, I, yeah. and as they're meant to be dumb, that bothers me a little bit. That it's meant to be, you know, that's a dumb person's thing to read. I watched the, um, I watched the, the Twilight Zone segment. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. And I have to say, I don't think it judged the tone very well. I don't think it, mm. it, I don't think it does the short story um, the service it deserves, except for the fact that Dickie is sat reading comics Mm. And in the in the adaptation, it feels like that's a good thing. So I was quite pleased that that that, that shifted the focus away from comics being for dumb kids. It, is it, it yeah? Because an interesting thing of of it's still, it's still reading. I mean, the thing that don't forget this is fifty eight uh, with four yeah. years with with four years after the Wortham um, sure. trials, and so they're well into the comics book code. So comics mm-hmm. were still suffering a bad reputation in fifty eight. Mm-hmm. Um, Makes sense. And yeah, so. Yeah, that, that, that I, I, that's a good point. I did, I did recognise that. And but like you say, nowadays it would be, mm-hmm. um, you know, that parent would actually be go read my comics. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Go, go away and read my comics, but just, you know, but if you damage them, if you damage my uh, <laughs> my issue one of yeah. whatever, I'll, uh, I'll give you my white gloves. <laughs> yeah. so get out the cellophane really carefully. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, but no, James, thank you very much for for introducing me to this story, uh, and I and, well, it, and it's been a great complimentary piece to the to the lottery as well. So it's it is, it is good. We we'll have to see where um, where we go next, who I, who I ask mm. and what else I do because I think there's some so many great sort of short stories out there mm. for the 20th century. So much stuff I haven't done, uh, and this format seems to be working. I think you know it's something I wanted to try, um, and so we shall see if it does. Uh, this and Desert Island Comics, I think, are going to be sort of like, I'll do a lot more of these as as I ask yeah. people different things. Yeah, I love Desert Article Mix. It's great. Well, you may be on in the future. Don't you worry. Right. Uh, I have got a list of, uh, of people um, that will, will be coming on. Julian's next. Julian, uh, yeah, that's going to be fascinating. Part, partner in crime. Um, Julian will be will be on soon. Uh, he's already told me what I've got to read. I'm lined mm-hmm. up. Um, it's uh, yeah, some some good choices. I won't spoil them. You'll, you'll see it coming soon. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. If you appreciate us, what we're doing. Uh, check us out but more than that if you really appreciate us and what I'm doing mm-hmm. you'll really enjoy what James does with Tony and other things on comics in motion so before we go before I get into my spiel give us yours James where can people find you and where can people listen to you thanks Scott it was like a real privilege to come on you know I've listened to you for, for years and we've interacted for a long time um, over Twitter where uh, yeah. you'll find me most active um, that was almost professional oh, that was good good <laughs> Um, you'll find me under I am Jack's Musings and that's J-A-C-S um, yeah that's the best place to find me and then I post my random reviews of things that I'm watching and reading on WordPress um, but the best place to find that link is yeah yeah through my Twitter cool and of course you you are doing a uh, season's greetings that's right yeah so we've just finished doing um, all of Buffy so if you haven't yet you've got seven months worth but seven episodes worth of uh, mm. content to catch up on and then we're gonna we're heading straight into angel so it makes perfect sense to stay in that world um so yes. at the end of the month we're in august now aren't we yep at the end of august will be our first episode of investigating angel yeah that first season of angel because buffy's great i've enjoyed your sort of discussions on buffy and stuff but that mm. first that's first season of angel is all right and it was a much more up and down show. Yeah, I do love it. I actually think there are there are better episodes. There are some of the best episodes of Angels, mm. like top of Rival Buffy, and mm-hmm. the ending is phenomenal. 
yeah um, absolutely but, but it, it does find a season to find its feet it's sort of like to find its uh it to, to, to move it away from the buffy sort of stuff but yeah i'm looking yeah, forward to agreed. it i say that um i won't get into that because that's that i'll just ramble again about other things so, <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen i say thank you very much for listening to us talk about this i hope you enjoyed the story and if you do enjoy the story you did enjoy this come and let us know come find us speak, oh. to, uh, speak to jay on on uh twitter come find me it's at 20th century geek on twitter or it's at 20th, what, 20th Century Geek on Facebook, on, on uh, uh, Instagram. Apparently, I've got a Tumblr I've got all about it. So I've got an email about it the other day. Um, and uh, you can find us on uh, 20thcenturygeek.com is the website. I've got all the details and stuff on there. There's some blogs and reviews and all these other bits and pieces on there. If you do like what we're doing, go on your podcast catcher. Go leave us a review. Five stars appreciated. But any stars, they all sort of help. Any feedback is fantastic. And if you really enjoy what we're doing, we um, in all over this, we do a whole bunch of other stuff on the Patreon. That's patreon.com slash 2020 uh, CG Media. Uh, and that covers stuff from both uh, 20th Century Geek and Stories at a Time of Space. I give 30-minute thoughts on a monthly basis. We have the Creator Corner where I get people on to talk about what they're doing. And on a weekly basis, and I've got to put the podcast out today, uh, just reminding myself, me and Julian talk uh, on our uh, point the trek through the Twilight Zone, starting from the 1959 series, and we're going to work our way through it. So go check that out if you really like what we're doing. Other than that, get on there. It's well worth it, people. I appreciate, yeah, I appreciate your, I appreciate your support. I always do. Uh, but James, thank you very much for doing this. It's been it's been great talking to you. This has been a really good yeah, fun, thanks, uh, chat, and uh, we shall do it again. And you will be joining me on that desert island. We will talk comics in the future. Lovely. Uh, excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And we'll talk again soon. Mm-hmm.